hello everyone. Um, today we have a really uh, exciting guest speaker. We have Tanya Piha here. Tanya is, uh, has a very interesting and, and, and uh, versatile background in sales management. She has managed sales in, in uh, very uh, sales oriented organizations like in the telecommunications industry and also in, in very uh, non-sales organized industries like, like in the legal area. And, and uh, she has had really exceptional results in, in her, her work. And, and today she will tell us about the sales management process and, and uh, she will her first have a presentation and after that she will, she will uh, have a question and answer session. So, so uh, please feel free to put your questions in the chat or in the raise your hand function where you can then ask them live. So with these words, Tanya, you're very welcome to help us guest lecture series. Please uh, start whenever you're ready. Hey, thank you, everybody. And I'm really uh, kind of a, happy to hear these kind words. But I think it's always a kind of a journey that I've traveled. And I wanted to share you some of the lessons learned that I've managed to happen and see during my career path that I've done in sales management, but also in marketing. And I see that there are many great people participating. And I will now share my, in just a minute, I will put my presentation on for you. Uh, I saw that you had the co-host option for me so that I could share it, but now it disappeared somehow. Let's see if I can share my presentation for you. Uh, Tanya, you already yeah. you already a co-host. I've already made you a co-host. Yeah, but I, now it's disappeared. I can't share my presentation. Interesting. Yeah, I see that you put me into co-host. Let's see meeting. This is weird because now I can't see the what could have happened. Can anybody? So, um, Tanya, do you see the um, green share screen? Yeah. Now it appeared. Yes. Now it's back. Now we can put this on. Sorry for the small delay. Okay, I hope you can all now see this presentation. I'm no, using my... What at the moment? Okay, no. I'm gonna give this allowance. Uh, okay, I need to go back and forth just a minute, please. Okay, now we should be back in business. And I hope that my presentation will be now visible to you. Yes, yes, I can see it. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Like we haven't been training this for like, like nine months, but I'm using my private uh, computer now. And here I haven't been doing so many presentations. But however, uh, I want to wish you a very good morning, even though it's really great here in Helsinki. I don't know if you're all located here in the uh, capital area, but however, it's gray November in Finland, but however, it's gonna be a great morning to uh, talk with you about how sales management can be done in this modern world. Uh, first of all, it's great to meet you all. Uh, my name is Tanja Piha. And I've been like, I was presented uh, by Kari 
uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff before doing my current job at Greenstep. Uh, I started my B2B sales and marketing uh, work at Telia, the Telia company uh, in Finland. I was working there for altogether 13 years. And my last position within Telia company was in Norway, where I was the head of the commercial management in, in the B2B segment in Oslo. So then after that, I joined the legal industry. I worked four years in the legal business. And that was probably one of the most weird, but the most uh, experience giving a uh, moment uh, in my life to work with people who really didn't want to do sales. But we managed, I'll show you some good examples what we did during those years. Uh, then I've been doing some podcasts. I, I'm trying to learn as much as I can from different people. So uh, there's one issue that has always been really interesting to me and it's how Finnish companies, we tend to go to Sweden when we start our international operations. However, what we see from the statistics is that the Finnish companies who uh, go international are not necessarily that successful. And I wanted to learn what are the reasons why the Finnish companies don't succeed in Sweden. And then I made a podcast series with the Finnish Chamber of Commerce in Sweden and we learned some basic stuff that probably you all know who are doing this course. First of all, it's about the team. You need to have a great team. Then you need to invest in sales and marketing. It's nothing more uh, than that. Uh, but there are a few companies that have done it and that was a great lesson learned. And many people on the podcast can be found in Spotify, for example. But what I do today is really, really interesting. Uh, I work at Greenstep, which is a Finnish family-owned uh, growth company. Uh, the turnover is a bit over 30 million euros, and Greenstep operates in Finland, Sweden, and in Estonia. And there might be some professionals already here listening, and Greenstep offers great opportunities for people like you. And we'll come back to that at the end of the presentation. But feel free to ask and stop and comment and share your ideas when we go along. But this is what I've been doing if I look at the companies and the positions that I worked in. But it's not always that kind of, okay, you go from one victory to another. There are things that I've learned. This is uh, an old picture after I don't do cross country skiing that much, but somebody uh, took me to Finlandia Hiihto. And this is from the Lahti uh, ski stadium that I'm kind of a crossing the finish line. But I think it's a metaphor also for sales and for business life. You go a long, long way and you fight for those things that you believe in. You, I always think that I, I've always wanted to work in firms, in industries, and with people who I think give me purpose, who make others shine. And then in a moment when you really achieve something, you can do it with a smile in your face. And I think the more I've thought about what is essential in sales management, it comes down to people. You never succeed without a great team. It needs to be a people gathered from different backgrounds, people who have different experiences from different cultures. But at the end of the day, it's how you meet people. It's about empathy. It's about understanding other people's opinions. It's about listening. And those are the skills that are essential in sales and essential in if you want to succeed in all kind of a positions in life, no matter what you do. It's with your friends, it's with your family. This is actually a funny picture. It has been taken uh, at uh, Esport Arena a couple of years back. And I don't know if you're interested in sales, but there are many uh, sales gurus. There's Rubanovic, Pia Hautamäki, Tomi Hilvo, Julius Tuomi, Koski and others. So I think it's great to be surrounded by people 
who help you to shine. And that's something I want to encourage you as, as students and people who want to learn new things. I wish that we all could build great networks. I wish we all can help our networks. We would build such a kind of a strong networks within the companies, within the schools that we study in, within the kind of a social media, and kind of a give something and then you will get something in return. And it's such a rewarding feeling in sales management and no matter what you do. But in sales, you know, this was a kind of a nice picture in a way because when I was working in the legal industry, it was a very lonely position. I didn't have colleagues who were interested in speaking about how to be more successful in sales. But this network of people gave me strength. Uh, they gave me insights. They were my walling park uh, to go through different ideas. And when I was some, sometimes kind of a desperate, I don't know how to get along. I had a network, I had people around me who supported me. And I think you will learn in sales management, if you read books, that there are lots of theories. Those are important. I'm not saying that they're not. But however, I think we sometimes forget the importance of people. And now when I work at Green Step, uh, we offer financial services to uh, growth companies oh. in three countries and I think it's you don't always get to choose the people you work with but I think being an adult and being interested and giving room to different kind of people I think it's more more rewarding than if you just kind of look at the theoretical metrics and stuff like that which is really important too in the sales. What kind of experiences do you have working in teams? If I ask, is there somebody who wants to share your story? Well, I did serve in a, in a sales, sales, as a sales negotiator mm -hmm. in Finakta Oy. So we certainly had this team mentality in the unit where the manager is part of the team in a way that we are all the time discussing about the sales, how we are progressing there, is there something we can improve, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff that really try, they try to make us connect together. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? Well, considering the, how hectic the, uh, the, the pacing was in the, in the company, I have to say that I did enjoy it when I got some positive feedback. I think the power of positive feedback is great, but sometimes with my own team, we try to kind of talk about different things than not only the sales metric. It's really easy to kind of spend your time talking about how many sales meetings, how many calls did you have, uh, what is this customer? But sometimes it's really, really essential to ask how people are doing, especially now that we all sit in our kitchens and look around. It's kind of a really easy to feel disconnected. And then it's really, I, I think it's nice. I don't know. I, I feel that it's kind of a great way to build understanding and build stamina and support each other because I think we are seeing a change in the uh, world of how companies operate and it's affecting the sales. It's not anymore a work of a lonely cowboy who goes there and tries to be successful. In order to be successful in sales, you need a team, you need a good team around you. And how good you can support each other, I think that kind of a determines if you're good or not, or if you achieve your results or not. Thank you, Carl, for your feedback. Uh, then this is a path that I've seen when working in the legal industry in a professional services company, but I've tried to kind of remove the industry away from here. This is kind of a timeline 
where we invited each and every one within the company to come along and try their skills in sales. And it was in a kind of a time when the company uh, was planning the IPO to be a listed company in the first North in Helsinki. So of course, when you are planning an IPO, you want to kind of have a solid growth plan, how you will make the better and bigger numbers. That's kind of a, the whole idea behind the IPO. And then we wanted also to plan how those numbers can be met. So uh, during that time, the company had a dedicated sales team focusing yeah. on... <laughs> I, yeah, I got a rock of bad. Kyllä, rock of bad, sorry. Sorry, my microphone is on. I'm muted. Okay, never mind. But however, it was a kind of a brave decision. We had a dedicated sales team, but we decided to get rid of that one. And, and uh, the first thing we thought that, okay, let's encourage the professionals, the lawyers to meet customers, no matter what they talk about, but just get them together. Just get them discussing. Do you know what happens? Uh, I'm going to show you a kind of a nice picture of what we did because it's kind of a fun. You would never think that a serious lawyer with their suit on would kind of a, want to do a kind of a gamification and add playfulness to their work. And it succeeded. Uh, probably this took almost uh, one year to get the people going and we built the solid platform. And then after that, we uh, introduced new roles that everyone within the professional services company had to be in sales, no matter if they wanted or not. But of course, there was a scale. Either you could be a kind of a hunter going after new customers and having more sales oriented target setting and bonus model. Or then the other option was, okay, you can be a har farmer. You take care of your own customers, you cultivate them, but your job is to take care of their needs. You need to go and assess how their business is going, uh, what kind of a, uh, challenges there might be. Is there some other areas where we could help them as a company? What we did during that time, because during this period, the company was not that known. We did some PR activities that gained us some earned media. Uh, we did, did start the international operations in Sweden and started to introduce the sale, the basic sales management tools like, okay, how many sales meetings are you having? How many offers are you making? What is the value of your offer base? What is the estimate of the sales figure that we are believing that we will get in the next six months? Really basic stuff. But the problem with this kind of a sales model was that we took too much account those hunters who were supposed to do the new customer hunting and we forgot the farmers and we quite, quite fast learned that okay that's not the way how you manage a new professional uh, services kind of a firm where everybody is in, in sales we kind of uh, rethought the whole model and wanted to say that, hey, we are all in sales. We made those farmers a more essential part of the company's growth plan. Uh, we introduced a sales playbook, uh, an improved sales process, started a sales academy where we provided great uh, coaching methods and exercises and group support to those people who were not that experienced in sales. But what we also did that was that we, when the new lawyers were joining the company, we, we made a good induction for them and kind of speeded up their process, how they were getting along in the sales roles. And then I think the next part was that we, we wanted to see how the marketing is part of this one. And I think this is a very important uh, message to all of us. We very easily, we talk only about sales and it's great. It's really great. But I think what is easily forgotten is the marketing. I think in today's world, 
the best companies, the most successful companies are the ones who can really put sales and marketing to work together to help customers to understand their needs, to be data driven and relevant for the customers in all the phases of their uh, buying process. And that's something we try to do. And I'm not saying this is a perfect model. Uh, here we see lots of things that could be improved, could have been introduced earlier. But this was something that went quite well. And this is the picture I wanted to show you. Uh, this is Mount Fondo. We had a kind of a, a sales coach uh, working with us uh, who draw this mount uh, and here on the left hand side, you see those numbers. That's the number of sales meetings you were supposed to have in a certain period. And these funny little figures, they are the lawyers. They are little, little funny, a bit bulky lawyers, but they were climbing up. You see there are a few who are already doing 12 sales meetings, but look, so many lawyers were still in the base camp. They didn't get along. So we gave some refreshments to these lawyers here in the bottom. Hey, you need to keep, unfortunately, the, I didn't find a picture, but here, those whom I think it went up to 20 sales meetings and those who accomplished that one came to paradise and there was a reward waiting for them. But I think uh, no matter if you work in an industry that's really traditional and you work with people who are not necessarily that into the learning new sales skills. I think it's great to add some playfulness and gamification and make sales fun. Let people try their skills. And I think that went quite well. And we were happy to see a hockey stick in the revenue of the company. And I think it's always like, uh, I remember there was a Kaupalehti journalist asking the managing director, okay, what is behind these growth figures? Why is your revenue growing? There's only one simple answer to that one. Either you get some new customers, and when you get new customers, usually it requires some sales activities, or you are successful in selling more to your existing customers. And usually that requires some selling activities too. There's also a third option to kind of have revenue growth and it's kind of a doing mergers and acquisitions. You can go and acquire some companies, but this is only organic growth that we're showing here. And I think it was pretty nice. Uh, Tanya, there's um, a question from uh, Thomas. Maybe Thomas, you'd like to read out your question. Yeah, I was like, like referring to your prior part that, um, you know, you built a system with hunter farmers and everybody's in sales. Do you still think that in today's world you do need to separate marketing or sales? Or can it be one unified teams, but of course separate responsibilities and, and, uh, and targets, but with one unified goal as in one team? Hey, I think this is a brilliant, brilliant comment. And you are spot on because most of the companies, and I'm now talking more from the B2B context, they are still having those functions in silos. There's one marketing organization and then there's sales and then there might be the production and other functions. And you are totally right. In order to be successful, they should be one team working for one target together. The roles can be different. But it should be because you always, when they are separate, they tend to get their own target settings. They tend to do a bit different things. And I think if you think about how they should be organized, how they should be managed, it should be one team. What is your experience in that one? Have you seen successful examples? Well, um, I would, yeah, well, that was, that was why I asked. I basically, Traditionally, it's been two separate teams, and um, even if, if there are unified goals, they still tend to drive their own ship and, and, and hunt their own goals. So I've been in a few companies where it's more talk than practice, and uh, I like to see it actually being one real team. And, and that one of the first steps would be to stop talking about 
sales and marketing. There, don't give them even the brand of a team, of separate teams. Just talk about one, let's call it customer acquisition team or something like that. Like, like you, you have to f like work against history. So, sure. so be systematic in taking away those old stigmas and, and roles and make everybody work as, as one. I totally agree with you. Very good comment. Very good comment. Thanks. But it's kind of funny. Uh, before I joined Green Step, I was doing some consultancy work together with Katri Tanni, who is a kind of a great spokesperson for uh, combined B2B sales and marketing activities and not two separate functions, exactly like you were talking about. And she has a much stronger background and visibility what is the status in Finnish firms and unfortunately it is still that they are two separate functions and there are really few companies who are doing revolutionary actions on this one I don't know why is it like that but I think we will see there will be there must be because otherwise companies are wasting their money they are not uh, customer focused enough and they are not doing the things that will result in in good business kind of a results. So let's see, in two years, I think most of the companies in the B2B must have their sales and marketing in one unit. Good comment. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, but joining GreenStep one year ago uh, was that uh, Ture Teer is a founder. He has a really, really strong background working in the uh, various industries, working with the startups and growth companies, but also multinationals. He has a really uh, long background working at Nokia. And I asked him, and what I've kind of observed uh, working with him now for a year, is that what are the success factors in order to build a successful growth company and it's like here you're studying sales management but it's easy to forget that there needs to be some underlying uh, foundations behind that one and and that's something that Tora puts lots of emphasis in is that you need to have a brilliant high quality product uh, he talks a lot about quality because if you have a crappy product what is the kind of a role of sales kind of pushing something that the customers don't need or they don't value or they don't want to pay for. And that's, uh, I think, the first thing when kind of a planning a new business is that the product or service, whatever it is, but it needs to be high quality, it needs to be brilliant, it needs to be something that the customers value. But looking and working with Tuore, uh, I think he does I don't know how many sales meetings he does per week, but he's, he's one of the best in Green Step, even though he does a, a lot and he's working as the chairman of the board. Uh, but I think what matters in sales is that you need to be every day, even though it's a, if it's a gray November morning, passionate. Finding what the customer's problems are what their needs are, listening, understanding, and then trying together with the customer to solve them. These are really easy and you say, okay, what is the point? We've already known that. But I think then it's time to stop and think a bit deeper because it's we still see lots of people working in sales that go and push their own product and try to close the deal and not really stop and understand and be brave about understanding the customer needs and sometimes saying, we cannot help you. You should go and do that. Or, hey, we can help you in this area, but here you need to do some stuff on your own. And that's something uh, that I've observed working with Tore and uh, sitting in various sales meetings together with him is that to be passionate, eager, but also able to listen to what the customers are saying to you. But what he's also teaching us 
is that if you don't see growth, your business will die. Because looking for growth, you need to be active, you need to be innovative, you need to come up with the new product ideas, you need to improve your own ways of working. So what he's saying, grow or die. And I think it's a very good saying because uh, what we see in Finland is that we don't have too many growth-oriented companies that that are going for the international growth or they they don't really oh we're happy here and that's a problem for the Finnish economy and that's a problem for everybody so uh, I think Ture is a, and Green Step is a fantastic example in that one that we are eager we are truly looking for growth with our customers and that's inspiring that's something that i feel okay it's great to be there every morning and it's great to learn from my colleagues and i, I will never be ready in doing things like that and I, I, there are so many new colleagues and new industries new businesses new customers that i can learn from and i, I think that's the salt in my job but at the end of the day in sales management uh, it's really fun to talk about the passionate side of the sales and meeting customers. But sales is a very systematic and it should be and it will be a systematic way of approaching customers. You need to have some uh, amount of activities reaching out for the customers uh, and you need to plan what you do. You need to improve your way of introducing your services. You need to get feedback. Uh, and this is something that everybody working in sales should should have in their back pockets. While I was doing my uh, podcast, How to Be Successful in Sweden, I had the privilege of having one of the most powerful businessmen in Finland uh, who visited my podcast, Björn Valrus. And I've never actually thought before what he thinks of sales. And he has a strong background in comparing the Finnish market and the Swedish market and what are the differences there. And he explained it so well. Go and listen to that uh, episode from the Spotify because he's a really, really, really powerful uh, communicator who really got the message out and I'm just trying to uh, copy what he thought. But you don't need to tell everything. It's sometimes enough that you kind of uh, tell and you make your product interesting. You need to be bold. And he talked about the same things that you need to be active. You need to go out there and meet people. Uh, you need to be really active in the digital social networks. And that's something I was like, okay, if Björn Valros is saying be active in uh, digital social networks. Could he be talking about LinkedIn? Uh, obviously, he is not in LinkedIn. I don't know if he will ever consider being part of uh, LinkedIn. But that's something that I think we all need to. It's not about that we sit there and here and think about, okay, this will. Let's conquer the world. Let's go. Let's be bold about products that we are offering. Let's be brave that we're doing this. Let's make them shine and let's talk about the great things. You don't have to tell everything if you have some flaws in there, if you're not ready yet, but tell about those things that are working. And that was really, really nice. And I, I encourage you to listen to what he said. There's also an article that I've wrote to Kaupalehti about his message, if you want to go further into that one. But there are some great uh, examples, but I think the most important thing is that you cannot be successful if you don't have a relationship with sales. And if, even though you think uh, Björn Valros is doing uh, only uh, financial stuff, but during his career, he's been doing lots of sales and that's what made him so successful. I think that's my comment, but really, really nice opportunity to hear his opinions about sales. If I think about how many people, if you look at the ranking of the most valued professions in Finland, doctors, teachers, those are the really respectful, uh, good 
uh, proficiencies that you kind of can gain. But then if you look at the bottom line of that uh, survey, people who work in sales, sales representatives, that's the position 673 or something. We need to raise the value of the sales work. We need to understand that it requires skills, it requires theoretical background, it requires academic training, it requires really multiple skills. But I encourage people to uh, look the career paths that there are in sales. And, and one reason why it's important is that if we look at the companies, this is, I took these examples uh, yesterday from Allbright Sweden, which is a, a foundation that works to boost diversity within companies. And I, I don't know how many female students there are uh, participating today in this class, is that in Sweden, these are two real life examples about companies that I have here as pictures, that they have all male panels. And they look really the same. They've decided to put red ties in the right hand, and they're like from the same uh, model that these guys look like. And here on the left hand side, they decided to drop the tie, but they all have a blue uh, skirt there and a uh, jacket. But if you're a female thinking about not wanting to work only in support functions is that if you want to be a CEO one day, you need to have some experience in running a business. And if I look uh, of the CEOs of the uh, listed companies in Finland, many of those uh, female CEOs have a background in sales. And that's really because sales is something measurable. You need to reach your targets. And that's something I hope that many of you see as a great opportunity uh, to start building a career in sales and marketing. Because like Thomas said there earlier, they should be considered the same. The quote is in Finnish. Uh, this is, I don't know, some of you might know her face, but she's Sanna Suvanto Harsai, uh, chosen twice the most powerful businesswoman in Finland. Uh, she has multiple chairman of the board uh, positions. She's uh, in the Scandinavian Airlines board. Look her background. She's like, what she hasn't done sh shouldn't be done. She's doing everything. But her message is think about sales twice as much as you think about going through your expenses. Sales is the only thing that brings growth to companies, nothing else. I think there are only few powerful uh, figures in our business world who are talking about sales. She's one of the few, but she's living in Denmark and working in various Nordic companies. And I think she really, really understands and wants to raise the importance of sales uh, when building successful companies. I think it's, it's great to quote her sayings from time to time. But before we go for the Q&A session, uh, listed companies in Finland. Uh, Greenstep offers a different kind of a, uh, financial services like payroll and accounting. Uh, we offer part-time CFO services. Uh, we help companies when they are acquiring, uh, buying or selling companies, doing financing for that. We have a 20 plus people HR consultancy 
uh, function who, uh, of course, during this great services to different and various steps during that uh, path when the companies are growing. And it's been a very, kind, kind for me personally, if I think what I've learned here is that talking about the financial part, we have a chance to talk with the managing directors of the chief financial officers within the companies. And those are discussions that give me a lot because then you, you can really go very deep into the company's situation and you can analyze and then find some ways to help them. But thinking about what kind of a roles, I'm not sure, but we try to make it as comfortable for them as possible. If you go and ask, did they all feel comfortable after this? Definitely no, but we had those funny little fat figures who were climbing up the wall and I think majority probably felt that she's crazy, this woman. But to make things visible, to make a bit fun of yourself, to make things that, okay, it's okay to be this funny little figure, but you still need to kind of be passionate about customers. And that's repeating things time after time. It's about repetition too, not giving up. Any other questions? Uh, Thomas has a, another question. Thomas? Yeah. Um, what's, Tanya, what's your take on, on, uh, on having hunters and farmers separately or having uh, one function that is responsible for both hunting and then farming? What, what, what's your general take on that? <laughs> I mean, uh, the I'm, background in asking is that uh, something that started in SaaS business uh, has gone very far in all kind of long, long time service businesses that you would have a kind of have the customer acquisition as one as I, I earlier talked about and then have the customer success, mm -hmm. which is kind of different when, when once the client is on uh, mm -hmm. uh, serving and keeping the client and growing it, it's quite different from, from the acquisition part. What's your general take on that? Um, I think it's, you need somehow to separate those two roles because if you don't have a function within the company who is responsible for the customer acquisition, it's really easy to kind of be a bit happy and fat with the current customer base. And that's why I think you need to somehow make sure that you have some incentives, some function uh, some way of doing that customer acquisition part uh, together with sales and marketing. I think it's really important, like you said earlier, that the marketing should have a really important role. It could be uh, building awareness, cultivating leads, uh, qualifying those marketing qualified leads that get then into the sales organization. Uh, I don't know. This is something I don't have definite answer how it should be done. It of course depends. Uh, at GreenStep, we have a bit different approach uh, compared to what I was explaining or what we did in the legal industry. But I think you need to try what works best in various companies and various industries. But it's clear, like, in order to be successful, you need to get new customers and you need to have some kind of a way of doing that. It would be great that I would have a patent answer. Hey, do this no matter what the industry and then you will be successful. I'm sorry, I don't have that one. I'm trying to figure that no, out. I, 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 I completely agree. I mean, you had so many examples of, of that you can't forget about sales. It, it is in essence the only one, only function that, that really or the only activity that drives sales. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I was thinking, should I or should I not ask this? But I will. There's this classic when you have I mean, I've been in, in, in many hunter farmer organizations. At best, it works really, really well. Mm -hmm. But uh, have you experienced the same, that often the, mo the best and most experienced salespeople tend to drive themselves to the farming role, and then you put the least experienced people doing the toughest part of sales, which is hunting? 
Mm. Does that sound familiar? Well, if I look what we... Not really, not really. If oh, I go good. back to my legal and if I look at Green Step, of course it's easier for the more experienced one. They tend, to, people tend to call them. They kind of get those new mm. customers easier than the rookies. Yeah, that's but the network. That's the net power of the network. But no, to be honest, I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that one. And it's always important because, for example, our team, we, we try to kind of, if I look at my experienced colleagues, they do have their own customer base, but they are not the only ones working there. And they have mm -hmm. the incentive model where they need to kind of get new customers too. Yep, yep. Well, kind of that, that's why you have incentive models. They should drive the direction. Yeah. You know, people. Yeah. yeah. Very good comments. I re really like this part. We should have more time to discuss. Any other comments and questions here? I have maybe one more. Uh, this is uh, related to looking for jobs and not only in, in sales, but, but in any field. Uh, we know from statistics that about 75% of the new open jobs are not publicly announced. Mm -hmm. So it means that you won't really hear about them unless you contact uh, proactively a, a certain organization. And I, I keep telling to my friends that they should call companies and ask that, do you have any open vacancies there? but it's, it's very difficult for a person who has never done, done sales before. Would you have any advice for a, for a person who is looking for a job, how to, how to call and, and, and ask if, if there are any vacancies in, in, in a certain organization? Yes, uh, I, I really want to share. Thank, thanks for bringing this topic up. Uh, when I was in Norway, that was five, a bit over five years ago, uh, I, I lived in Oslo for one year and my family lived in Helsinki and I, I was traveling back and forth and that was really stressful for me and I missed my then second grade grader son every day and I felt that okay I don't want to live like this anymore so I, I resigned from my position in Telia and then my boss in Oslo asked do you want us to help you to start looking for positions within Telia Finland and after I've been staying within the company for 13 years, I thought that if I don't now leave the telecommunications industry, they will fire me soon. So I felt, okay, I've done with this industry. Uh, but looking for a job, that wasn't easy. And, and I was really stressed when I felt, okay, no matter what happens, I will be in the same country with my son and I want to be there and I will do everything that I can to find a job. And I've made a list of the people from my network that would have some ways of introducing me somewhere to headhunters, to colleagues, and I started contacting them. And then I made a phone call or sent email, I don't even remember which one it was, but to uh, then CEO of Fondia, Salavainio, uh, who I knew, she, she's been selling me Ilta Sanomat media space couple of years before that and I, I didn't really know her that well but I kind of reached out for her and asked for advice and I said hey I'm coming to Finland and I, I'm looking for a job do you know whom I should contact I have done this and this and that and would like to have a role like this and that and that and then she introduced me to a couple of headhunters and I had discussions with them a couple of months passed and she reached out to me, Tanya, by the way, we have a role at Fondia. Would you be interested in talking about that? And that's how I ended up there. It wouldn't have probably happened. They didn't have an open position anywhere. But I've left a note to her in mind that, okay, this person is looking for a job. She might be a good candidate for this one. So be bold. Talk about your, what you want to do in LinkedIn. Uh, there are great examples, follow for example Juha Toivola, who is an organizational psychologist, about uh, how to find jobs. Uh, then reach out to people. I think that's the best advice. That's how I ended to Greenstep. Uh, I was Tore Teir reached out because I, I've never met him before, but we're both active in LinkedIn, so he's probably seen my post and I've seen what he's been doing. 
And then he sent me a LinkedIn message, Tanya, by the way, would you be interested in talking about the role like this? And I said, okay, let's talk. And here I am. So I probably, I would never get a job if I would go through the kind of specifications in a job advertisement. They are looking for superhumans and not many of us are that kind of a superhumans. But I want to encourage you, most of the jobs today are found through networks. So reach out to your network, ask for help. I'm happy to help you. We have open positions at GreenStep currently. We are recruiting all the time. I don't know if those positions are something that you are interested in, but go and look them from greenstep.fi or whatever you want to do, reach out to people. I'm sure there will be great opportunities for you. Okay, Tani, I think this is a great conclusion for the, for the session. Uh, you, you emphasized the importance of people, the relationship to, to uh, sales, and finally the importance of, of networking. So, so thank you very much for, for taking your time to deliver the lecture. And, and I truly hope that uh, some of our students will be in contact with you later then. Thank you, Tanya, very much.